This is going to be an overview of the Song of Solomon. People say that the Bible is a boring book, yet they watch action movies, horror movies, mystery movies, suspense movies, and every genre known to man. The thing is, the Bible has all of that stuff. And Song of Solomon has all the love story stuff that the women like to watch. Just like all the other books of the Bible, you have a historical, doctrinal, and practical application for the Song of Solomon. So historically, Song of Solomon is about Solomon searching for a virtuous bride. And doctrinally, you will see things about Jesus Christ and the church, the bride of Christ. Solomon will picture Jesus Christ, and the bride will picture the church, which is the bride of Christ. You will also see things about the rapture, the tribulation, the second coming, and the millennial reign. Chapters 1 through 2, if you read those and look really closely, it gives you some things that remind you of the church, the church age. If you read chapters 3 through 8, look really closely, you'll see events that remind you of the rapture. And practically, you can get some instruction for your marriage out of this book. But let's look at the chapters. Chapter 1 really shows you our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Song of Solomon 1 and verse 3 says, Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. So it says thy name is as ointment poured forth. Jesus Christ has the name above every name. Jesus Christ is the only person who has millions of people singing songs about him every Sunday. He has the name above every name. Verse 4, Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. So she will remember his love more than wine. For some men, the only way they could give up drinking and drugs was for the Lord Jesus Christ and their love for Him. Coming to Jesus Christ would be the greatest thing you can do. The only way you can truly get your life clean and stay clean is to get saved. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. She says in verse 5, I am black but comely, O you daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So the bride is black. This is a Gentile bride, just like the church is a Gentile bride. The bride of Christ. Verse 13, A bundle of myrrh is my well-beloved unto me. He shall lie all night betwixt my breast. So the Lord Jesus Christ is what gives men the peace to go to bed at night. If you have problems going to sleep, then just take out your Bible and read it until you go to sleep. Chapter 2. In chapter 2, you see some prophecy on the rapture of the church. And that is Jesus Christ coming back to get his bride. That is on the, that's what is on the Lord Jesus Christ's mind. is coming back to get his bride out of this world. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says, The voice of my well-beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills, my beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. So these are the windows of heaven. My beloved spake and said unto me. Now look at what he says here. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. This is what will happen at the rapture. Jesus Christ is going to meet us in the air. He'll say, come up hither. Our vile bodies will be fashioned like unto his glorious body. This is when we'll meet the Lord in the air, as it talks about in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. This event is the rapture of the church. Chapter 3. In this chapter, you see the bride searching for Solomon. Sometimes in your Christian life, it seems like you just you can't get a hold of God. However, he's still there. You can get to him as quick as opening your mouth. He's, he's waiting for you to call on him. If you draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. 
But in the Song of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, By night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. So in your marriage, you should long to be with your spouse instead of wanting to get rid of them. You see how all these verses, it can apply to Solomon and his bride historically. Doctrinally, it's Jesus Christ and the church. And then practically, you can get some things that would help your marriage. The Bible is going to help you in every aspect. But you'll notice the bridegroom always shows up. In chapter 3 and verse 6, Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all powders of the merchant? So, it says perfumed with myrrh and frankincense. A lot of men go around stinking all the time. So, something that's going to help your marriage is to get better hygiene. Who wants to uh, wake up every day with somebody that smells like they just got off work? I'm sure Solomon was able to buy the best of the best when it came to this. And it says, Perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all powders of the merchant. Chapter 4. You have Solomon speaking to his bride, or Jesus Christ talking to the bride of Christ. It says, in 4.11, thy lips, O my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. So could Jesus Christ say that honey and milk are under your tongue? Or the word of God is likened to both honey and milk in the Bible. Do you speak the words of God? The Lord loves it when you do. So what is it that's coming out of your tongue, coming out of your mouth? Do you smell this good? For your wife or husband, as it says, the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon? Or do you smell like cigarettes and tobacco all the time and sweaty armpits? You could make it a lot easier on your marriage by having better hygiene, by having better smelling breath. In chapter 5, you have the bride talking to the bridegroom. And you can get an idea how the Lord Jesus Christ looked when he was here on earth. In chapter 5, it says in verse 10 and 11, My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousand. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. Now the Lord Jesus Christ's hair, if you read Revelation chapter 1, is white like wool, white as snow. Verse 12, His eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of waters. Washed with milk and fitly set. In Revelation 1, now his eyes are as a flame of fire. 13 through 15, his cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers. His lips like lilies, dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. His hands are as gold rings set with the barrel. His belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are as pillars of marble, set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. So now his countenance, if you read Revelation chapter 1, is as the sun shineth. Verse 16, his mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. So uh, could your wife or husband say that your mouth is most sweet, or does it smell like, you know, you just woke up? But here, Solomon is called altogether lovely, chiefest among 10,000. These are all descriptions people give to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it's not just about Solomon. It's a picture of something. And Solomon is a great picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. But look at all these descriptions. Can you give positive descriptions of your spouse like the woman here does for the bridegroom? Or are you always running to your friends and bad-mouthing your husband, talking to them about how bad he is, what he does wrong? Or can you focus on the good things that he does and his good qualities? And the other way around, are you go around sad because of who your wife is all the time? Or can you brag about her to someone else? <clears throat> Chapter 6, you'll see some things that remind you of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The second coming is something that happens in the future, after the tribulation, before the millennium. 
says in Song of Solomon 6, 4, Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tirzah, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Did you know we are coming back as an army with the Lord Jesus Christ? As it says in the book of Jude, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Now, verse 10 in chapter 6, Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? So in the Bible, the church is likened to the moon. If the moon doesn't have its own light, it pictures Jesus Christ because it reflects the light of the sun, Jesus Christ. If it does have its own light, then it pictures the church because the light is in them since they've been saved. So either way you believe on that, you still have a good picture of the church. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they're without excuse. And what that means is there's things all around you that show God is real, and the things around you, like the moon and the stars, that that shows you a truth about something that you can't see. The moon shows you the church. The sun shows you the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, chapter 7 will put you in mind of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. And this is a time of peace with Jesus Christ reigning on the throne. In verses 11 through 13, it says, Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourish, whether the tender grape appear and pomegranates bud forth. There will I give thee my love. So right off, people are turned off by this because it says, let us get up early. But it says, the mandrakes give a smell, and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O my beloved. You see, the Lord is laying up some things for his saints. And this reminds me of Isaiah 65, 21 and 22. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. This is future. The millennial reign. And that's what Song of Solomon chapter 7 will remind you of. There's coming a time when it's going to be perfect peace with the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne. Now chapter 8, you have the bride longing for the bridegroom. Every Christian should have their hope in the return of Jesus Christ. It says in Song of Solomon 8.14, Make haste, my beloved, and be thou like a roe or to a young heart upon the mountains of spices. So this verse reminds me of even so come Lord Jesus. Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So what we've seen in Song of Solomon is, historically, Solomon's love for this virtuous woman. Doctrinally, you see Christ in the church. And practically, you could go through this book and find some things that would help you with your marriage. Take some of the qualities you find, some of the things that are said. The... Bible is the greatest book on, on marriage counseling because it's going to tell you how to treat other people. And if you can treat your husband or wife like you would want them to treat you, then your marriage is going to be a lot better. And don't just look at the book from that perspective. You want to look at the doctrine because the doctrine is what makes the Bible come alive. The things about the tribulation, the rapture, the millennial reign. When reading the Bible, you want to look at all the aspects as you're reading it. That way you can get the masterpiece for what it really is. But this has been a Song of Solomon overview.